This week on Reigning in Life Through Faith. I said loving people is an expression through us of God's righteousness in us. Thank you for tuning in to the Reigning in Life Through Faith broadcast. Let's join Dr. Mills as he begins part three of Love, the Foundation of Faith. And so uh, we've been talking about love uh, being the foundation to faith. So we've been talking about and some people, you know, they have challenges with love, how to walk in love, how to uh, allow themselves to be developed in love. Well, we're going to talk about it some more. I got to thinking about this just before uh, we came in, that uh, love is the only commandment that we have. That's the only commandment New Testament believers have is love. We are commanded to love each other. We are commanded to love God. And so um, everything else that we have from God is a promise, basically, um, that we enter into through faith, which works by love. Is that right? So then if our love is not developed, then um, we may be obtaining some things. But according to the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians, it says uh, that you're like just uh, a, a bunch of noise, just noise. Let's just look at that for a minute uh, before I really get over into what I want to get into so that we can understand that just because you're getting things that your faith may be obtaining some things for you, it still doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean a whole lot. Amen. According to 1 Corinthians, the, uh, the 13th chapter. If we look at this, we'll see how insignificant you obtaining things and you thinking that things, because you got things, you have arrived. How insignificant that can really be for you, between you and God. Amen? And so the 13th chapter, and it says, Though I speak, in, speak with the to uh, tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become a sounding brass and a clinging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can move mountains, but have not love, I am, I am nothing. Now, this is according to Scripture. So you're not anything, according to Scripture, just because you have faith and you can get things with faith. Amen. 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 You don't have love, you're nothing. Amen? Amen. So we want to be something. Amen? Yeah. And so we're going to look at some things in Scripture uh, as to what God, uh, what, what God has said in the Word pertaining to uh, us and love and how we should conduct ourselves. Amen? Amen. And uh, when you see this, um, you, you might be challenged a little bit, but I believe that if you, if you turn over to God the things that you are challenged with, I believe uh, I'm under the, the, the belief that you, through God, can be what God wants you to be. Are you with me? So let's go to the fifth chapter of Matthew. And we're going to look at uh, some verses of Scripture. Verse 44 is the main, is probably the main Scripture we'll, we'll look at, but we'll back it up to, I think, about 13 or something like that. We'll read down through from uh, 13 down through 48, which um, I think verse, 40, for, verse 48 in this, in this, uh, in this series of, of scripture is really going to be an eye opener for you to a certain degree. And um, what we want to do is, is to get God involved in us being able to love the way that God loved us. As a matter of fact, Ephesians tell us that the reason that everything is created is because of love. The reason that everything that you see is created is because 
of God's love. Now that's big time, you see. That's, that's, man, that's something else. So we, we've, got, we, we've got a big task before us, that is to love people like God loved us. Hello. I said love people like God loved us. And you cannot love people like God loved us without his love being in you to love people. So this is something that you really want developed in you. All born again, all born again, blood washed, blood bought people have been inundated or at least you've got a seed of the love of God in you. Every last one of us. We have the seed in us. has to be developed. Because we, we, we come with the old nature as far as our mind is concerned, still trying to control us. And so therefore, with that mindset that we have, we, it, it, it will not allow the love of God to be developed in us and then flow through us to where out here in this physical realm, the people around us experience the love of God through us. And this is what we are supposed to do here in the earth. People are supposed to experience God's love through us so that they can desire God. Not us, but God. Amen. Are you with me? Okay. So in, uh, in Matthew, the fifth chapter, and beginning with verse 43, it says, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Now, you got to understand, Jesus is the personification of all that God is. Is that right? The love of God was personified in Jesus. Are you with me? And so he's, let, he's setting some things straight. He said, now, this is what you heard. Are you all with me? He said, now, this is what you've heard. You've heard that it was said, you should love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say, now, uh, we read in Scripture that everything that Jesus said was what the Father was saying. Because he said, I only say what my Father say." Yeah. So this is the Father talking through Jesus to us. Amen. He said, now, you've heard something. He said, but now I'm going to tell you something. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. Okay. He said, but I say to you, love your enemies. That means don't hate your enemies. Love your enemies. <laughs> Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. Pray for those who despitefully use you and persecute you. Woo. That settles some questions that people have been asking me. And so nobody have, have to ask me anything about how to love, what to love, all that kind of thing about love after you read this right here. Okay? You don't ask me how you love somebody, go to God and ask him how uh, or, or to teach you how to love the people that, that's on your job, in your family, um, those who hating you, those who talking about you, have talked about you, you understand that you're trying to get away from and you don't want to speak to no more, you got to ask God how to love those people because you want to do what he told you to do. Amen. And when you don't want to do what God told you to do, you are in trouble because now you're an unbeliever and you are and you're a, a person who is operating in iniquity. Okay? So, he says now, verse 45, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. <laughs> what, what, let me, okay, let me just back up again. Let's just, let's just read this, okay? I'm just reading the Bible. Okay? These are not my words. 
These are actually the Father's words. This, this is the God, Father of the universe saying this. All right, y'all with me? Okay. So if you don't want to do this, talk to him. Okay, don't get upset with me. Don't come asking me a whole bunch of questions. Why or how? You don't ask me nothing. He said it. Okay? All right, y'all with me? All right, praise the Lord. Don't worry, we're going we're gonna to go and look at some things. We're going to understand some things too. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you all with getting to the place where you can do exactly what he said do. But you still have to do work on your side. It doesn't, it's not automatic. Yeah. Ain't nothing in God's word automatic. Amen. Are you all with me? This is not automatic. Okay? But this is critical to your walk, being able to walk in faith. Hallelujah. And, if, and the word of God says we live by faith. So th this is criti critical to your life. Amen. To you living. Okay? Y'all with me? Okay. So he says, he says now, I'm going to start at verse 44 and read down through you know, the first little part there in 45, okay? He said, but I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, pray for those who despitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. So that has something to do with your sonship. Amen. Amen. And then he says in verse 45, for he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. In other words, God is not selective in his blessing because the same rain that is poured out on you is poured out on those who might curse God. All right? And then he says, for if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same thing? In fact, you got to understand, tax collectors in that day, boy, they were, they, they were, they were like, the scum of the earth to the people. That's where you need to use tax collectors, you understand? Kind of like tax collectors. <laughs> you, you don't want to hear nothing about taxes because you figure that they're taking something from you that, that doesn't belong to them. Amen. So anyway, um, he says now, don't they, don't, you know, if they love one another, you know, I mean, that ain't nothing. I mean, even the evil people do that. That's what he's saying here. I mean, those who are evil is loving one another. So what, what difference does it make if we just love one another? What profit do you get out of it? When he say, what reward will you, you know, what profit do you get out of that? Okay? But well, watch this. And if you greet your brethren only, what do, do you do more than others? That's like kind of like when people come to the church, you don't know them. You're greeting everybody else, all of the people you know, everybody belong, you see them, you know, but a stranger, a visitor come, and you're not approaching them. What reward are you going to get for loving those that you know right around you? The reward comes out of go approaching the person that you don't know, the person that has a visitor's badge on. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, See, some people won't even speak to them. Won't even say, hey, how you doing? Greet them. That's where you're going to get your reward from. Greeting people who is not your kind. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So he says now, do not even the tax collectors do this? Do so? And 
So if you're greeting people that you know, you get, you get no reward for that. He's saying evil people do that. And you don't want to be considered with evil people. You want to be considered above evil people. So when you see visitors coming in, you don't know somebody, greet them. Amen. Are you with me? Now watch verse 48, okay? This is where it gets down to where the rubber meets the road. It says, therefore, 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 because of what we said before. Therefore, you always have to look for what came before the therefore, amen, in order to know why he's saying therefore. So he says, now, therefore, you shall be perfect. Now that word perfect actually means that you are going to be complete. As a matter of fact, I'm going I'm to look at this in the Amplified uh, just as soon as we get finished right here. He says, therefore, you shall be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect. So if you want to be like God, you're going to have to do this. That's what he's saying. Let's look at the Amplified version of that. And uh, the Amplified version uh, of verse 48 says, For if you love those who love you, no, 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 that's, that's what happened here. You therefore must be perfect or, listen to this, growing into complete maturity of godliness in mind and character, having reached the proper height of virtue and integrity. So, what he's saying here is that if, if, if Jesus was telling us what God said to do, then you can reach this according to Jesus. Yeah. There's no such thing as I can't. The only reason you can't is because you're trying to do it in your own strength. You don't do this in your own strength. Amen. Watch this. He says now, having reached the proper height of virtue and integrity, as your heavenly father is perfect, or as your heavenly father has, has reached the proper height of virtue and, integ and integrity, having the same character and, mature, and, and maturity of godliness in mind that God has. Okay, y'all don't seem too happy about that. See, I'd be happy because, you know why I'm happy? Because now I found out that where God wants to take me. So I, I find out that he wants me on his same level. I find out that I can be on the same level or else he wouldn't have said to, to, to do this or to be this. He wouldn't tell me to be something that that's impossible for me to be. Right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So I find out I can be there, but your mouth will hinder you from getting there. If you say, I can't, I don't like this person. You know, I, all these negative things that, that, that shape your character and your mind has to change. Amen. Are y'all with me? Okay, I know this is a little rough. This is a little rough this evening, huh? Yeah. It's, I mean, you know, because I, I know. Because, see, you, you know, a lot of people, they just, they, they want to stay them. And they want people to accept them. Well, we do. We accept you as you are. As a matter of fact, what I found out is Patience is, uh, is, is really something. I'm, I mean, patience. Ooh-wee. I wrote something today as I was, as I was going through, when I was studying this thing. And it's, the promise to be like Christ is based on Hebrews. I'm going to go to Hebrews the sixth chapter in verse 12, and then we'll look at 
Hebrews the 10th chapter and verse 36 because in Hebrews the 6th chapter verse 12 it says that we obtain the promises of God through faith and patience. This is a command of God, so I know I can attain it through faith and patience. Verse 12 says, well, back in back of verse 11 says, and we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. If we look at, if we look at verse chapter 10 in Hebrews, verse 36, and we know this, it says, for you have need of endurance, or you have need of patience, so that after you have done the will of God, so do I know what the will of God is here? I've just been reading to you all. Yeah. Is that the will of God? Yeah. What's, what I've been reading to you? Yeah. His will is that we would, we would bless those who curse us. Huh? Love. You, you understand what I'm saying? Love those who hate us. Do good. That's, that's God's will. Is that right? So this says right here, for we have need of endurance or we have need of patience so that after we have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. So I'm seeing God saying, if I, if I, he says, therefore you must be perfect. This is who I'm going to be. But in order for me to be perfect, he's telling me I got to do, uh, that if I do all of this, then I'm going to be perfect. Promise is I'm going to be like God. I can't be like God, you understand? And I realized, I said, man, I understand now so much concerning patience. Because patience, look at James. This is Bible study, right? Okay, so you know, we come to Bible study, or it's Bible study every time you come to me anyway. But this is really Bible study. So in James, the first chapter, and verse four it says, it says, but let patience have its perfect work. That you may be perfect, or that you may be Complete. Actually, there's two words complete here. One means to be completed as Adam was in the beginning. And the other is to be complete in character and so forth like God is. Adam wasn't complete like that. He, he missed out on it. Because if he had been complete like God, then he wouldn't have got in trouble. You got me? Okay. But then in the garden, he had a body that's not like these bodies that we have now. Is that right? Yo, have y'all yo, have read Genesis? Y'all read about over there, Adam was in the Garden of Eden? That's just the first, you know, first couple of chapters in the Bible. You ought to have read the first, just the first couple of chapters in the Bible. Man. So what he say right here? He says, be patient, have, let, but let pray, patience, rather, have its perfect work. So I understand. Listen, this is what I'm seeing. Okay? Because he said, be perfect. Patience is involved in being perfect. What does that mean? What does, that, what does that really mean? This is what, what I really saw. It's me being patient with you. And I need to be patient with you because what I see right here is it's developing something in me. Uh, uh, let me give you all something else. All right. Since y'all don't quite understand that, you know, you 
may have a little problem with that. But let's go to, over in Hebrews, over into the fifth chapter of Hebrews then. Okay, y'all with me? Okay, let's just look at this. Oh, my, my, my. Ooh -wee. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all in the fifth chapter? Okay, all right. Y'all got them things that y'all can't write in, huh? Y'all, 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 do you have your paper with you? Got pencil with you? Okay, y'all jot down these, you know, you know, and those of you who didn't bring anything to write with and all that kind of stuff, you know, might have a punishment. Uh, put them in the, in the corner like a uh, school, you know. You go to the corner. <laughs> anyway. Yes. How you come to class with no with with no with no pencil, no paper? I don't understand that. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Okay, now watch this. Okay? Y'all there? Fifth chapter. Let's look at verses twelve through fourteen. Verse fourteen is where I'm going, but I gotta read from twelve, okay? For though uh, by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have, have come, uh, you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. Whoa. Loving people is um, is an expression of righteousness. I, I said loving people is an expression through us of God's righteousness Amen. in us. Amen. We are, I am, the righteous of God. I'm saying me. Now you can say what you want. I am the righteous of God. Got me? I'm not trying to be. I'm not, I, don't, ain't, I want to be. I am. I am the righteous of God. Because he made me righteous. Got me? Okay, but in order for that to be expressed in this physical realm, I express his righteousness through loving you. Love is an action. So my action is displaying God's righteousness. I can only express God's righteousness through love. And we'll, I'll, sh I'll show you why right here, okay? And he says, now, if, if, I, if, I, if, if all I'm messing around with is milk, I'm unskillful in righteousness. And, and what he's saying here, and, and milk, milk toting people, milk, milk toast people are people who can't get along with other people. Right. Yeah. If you, if you always got a problem with somebody, you a milk toast per person. Because you haven't let the word of God do something in your life to bring you to a certain place of, of maturity and completeness. Have that, that mindset that God has. Y'all with me? Yes. You understand this? Okay. So, let's look back here then. We know who the milk toast pe people are. They can't handle solid food. They can't handle solid food. You tell them something, they get mad. They don't understand you trying to help them. You know, you, you, you're trying to help them. You understand? You're not against them. You're for them. You try to tell them, you know, what they need to do, you understand, in order to do what should be done, they get upset with you. You know, that's a milk toast person. 
When, when, they, when that happens, just look at them and say, milk toast. <laughs> They'll, they'll, if, they, if, if they're here tonight, you understand, they'll know. They'll know exactly. They'll understand, uh oh, I gotta get it right. Oh, 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 oh. All right, okay, all right, okay. Just say milk toast. Milk toast. If they really want to get right, you see, they'll check themselves. If they don't want to, they're gonna get mad when you say milk toast. No, I'm, I'm, just, I'm serious. See, because you should never get angry with anybody who's trying to help you develop. Amen. And from what I am reading, if I'm patient with you, irrespective of how you treat me, I'm being developed Amen. in love. I'm being developed in love. That's when, when I say something to somebody, you know, and they, they all pastor, I don't pay them no mind. I just know they milk toast. <laughs> I don't say I don't say it, you understand, because you know I don't want I don't want them to get in any more trouble than what they already are in. Because they already in trouble. Because they won't listen to me. And the word of God says, you know, don't cause your brother to sin. Amen. Well, you can say milk toast. Some people, some, if they, if they, you find out, you know, then you have to ask for forgiveness. You understand? Once you understand that you caused them to sin, you understand. But if they're a person who really wanted to get, the, my wife and I, we having a conversation up here. I'm, I'm, I'm letting y'all in on this conversation. And, but if they really want to get right, you understand, then they won't get angry. You understand? They say thank you, and you've gained a brother, according to the scripture. When you straighten a brother out. Is that, come, is that what the scripture said? Does anybody know the scripture? <laughs> yeah, but you know, if they get upset, then you say, forgive, forgive me, Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry. You know, I won't call you milk toast no more. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay, look, 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 look. Come on now. Verse 13 says, for Everyone who partakes only of milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. They are unskillful in loving people. They are unskillful in it. That, it, it, it this tells me that there is a skill to loving people who are unlovely. Are you with me? And you have to learn this skill. Are you with me? Yeah, because love is, is an action. It's not a feeling. It's not just a little, you know, goosebump stuff you understand that you do. That's not, uh uh, no. It's an action, it's a mindset that you have. I won't hold anything against you. No matter what you've done, I'm not going to hold it against you. Cuss me out, spit in my face. Can't hold it against you. If I do, I don't. I'm, I, I have loved you. I know some of y'all got some ways to go. I know, but God can take you there if you want to go there. So you know when y'all get to shaking your head, oh, no, no, but it's here. Well, I understand. I know where you are. You milk toast. I got you, I got you, I, I, I've already pegged you. So don't shake your head. When I'm up here teaching and something that you know you can't handle, don't shake your head, just, just look at me, listen, to, just like haven't touched you at all. Just say praise the Lord, glory to God, hallelujah. Yes, I believe it's me. I believe that's me. I believe, I, I believe I'm love. I believe I am love, amen, glory to God, hallelujah. If you speak and declare it out your mouth, that's what you will be. But you get to speaking that other stuff, no, I, no, I, no, Pastor, I don't know. No, well, that's where you are, see? And the more you speak that, that's, you're going to stay there. You ain't going to never develop. Amen. <laughs> I'm trying to help you all out a whole lot. I'm, I'm trying to help you all out a whole lot. You understand? Because it's your mouth that prevents you from being developed into what God wants you to be developed in. 
And you got to you, you gotta put a watch, watch over your mouth. Because your mouth has a direct line to your heart. And when you open your mouth, you expose your heart. Amen. Are y'all with me? Yeah, just keep quiet. No matter. See, as long as it comes to your head, you understand, you don't speak it out your mouth, you, you're good. But when you get to speaking stuff out your mouth, under your breath, you're in trouble. Because you nullify what God's word wants to do in you. And because I am anointed, and my words are anointed, the words of that are being sent out is sending out to do something in you. Amen. Are y'all with me? I'll get y'all squared away after a while. Y'all going to be all right. I say y'all going to be all right. Amen. Agree with me here. Yeah? I say y'all going to be all right. Amen. Amen. Okay. All right. So now look, he says, for everyone who partakes only of milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age. That word full age is the same, same word that we see over there in Matthew, the, the uh, fifth chapter, and where we see perfect. I mean, in, in verse 48, in, in the fifth chapter, same word. They, 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 they made two words out of it, full age. Let's, let's look at the Amplified. Let me just amplify it for you. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Y'all, 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 y'all gotta help me. See? See? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta want this. What I'm teaching you. Want it, okay? Amen. Yeah, praise the Lord. <clears throat> now, uh, I said amplified, I meant the uh, N NLT. The NLT says, solid food is for those who are mature. Yeah. Solid food is for those who are mature. Same Greek word that was translated perfect. Yeah. Same Greek word. If y'all got your little whatever, you know, y'all can look and check it out. Check me out. Yeah. I know I'm good. Because, I, you know, I, I, I go and do this before I come in here. <laughs> Make sure what I'm teaching you is correct. Are you with me? So now listen to what he says there. He said, but solid food belongs to those who are of full age. Let's skip that is. Full age in my Bible. Those who by reason of use. Use. Those who are, are by reason of use. Use, to me, is the same word that Jesus would have used. I, don't, it's, I didn't go to this final whether or not it's the same Greek word. But we're talking about um, that two houses and the re reason that one house was different than the other was because of the practice. Are you with me? Of the word. Putting God's word into practice. All right? One house, the houses look the same. One built on sand, other built on rock. The one that was built on rock was, had practiced the word. The one on sand hadn't practiced the word. Are you with me? Putting God's word into practice. Now, begins to build you up to the place where when someone do come against you, you're able to stand after having done all still standing without falling. Amen. Are you with me? Can you understand what I'm saying? See, you have to put God's word into practice. When someone comes against you, what are you going to practice? I'm going to bless them. Because that's what he said do. Pray for them. Pray for them, not against them. Are you with me? Pray good on them. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm putting God's word into practice. What happens with my patience with that person? Because in my practice of his word, I am being patient with that person. And in the patience, the patience now is developing me. Are you with me? Do you want love? Do you want to be able to love everybody? Yeah, even those who cuss you out. You want to be able to love them. You understand what I'm saying? That, 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 now, let me just say this because, see, they ain't gonna, they're not going to keep cussing you out. The Word of God says we heap coals of fire on their head. They're not going to keep cussing you out. But in order for you to get to the place where God can protect you, this is what you're going to have to do. God is our protector. He said he's our protector. But he can't protect you when you're trying to protect your own self. Because you're taking over his job. Are y'all with me? I know some of y'all just as feisty, you know, you feisty as I was, you know, hey, you're supposed to be. You're here with me. That's, that's why you're here with me, because you were feisty. You understand what I'm saying? Ready to, I was ready to fight at the drop of a hat, you understand? You know, you know I, was, I, I grew up, you know, if you put a stick on a person's shoulder and knock it off, you know, we fight. <laughs> That's, it's, we in a fight. We 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 going to fist the cups. If you even just 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 act like you want to take it off my shoulder, we it's it's a fight. So I know I know who I know who I got. <laughs> See y'all 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 sitting there looking like that, ain't, that wasn't me. Yeah yeah it was yeah yeah it was yeah it was, yeah, it, was it was you it was you it was you and and you still got a whole lot that in you now. That's reading you here with me. That's the very reading you here with me. I know who I, I know who my people are. Amen. Yeah, I know who my people are. God has given me what I need to give to my people because He di He did something in me. So therefore, I can talk to you. Amen. And that's reason I don't get scared of nobody. Yeah, because you know some pastors they scared. You know, you look at them. You know, and they okay, all right, do what you want to do. I'm saying. You don't even want to come this way. <laughs> don't even want to act like you want to come this way. Amen. Glory to God. Yeah, because my love will just tie you up, won't it, Rena? <laughs> won't it? Won't it? It'll tie you up. I have you crying. I have you crying. I have you crying. I'm telling you, I have you crying. Don't mess with it. I'm telling you now. I was reading something today in, in the scripture. Uh, Paul was praying about, I, I'll probably get to it, but I may not get it. I don't know. But anyway, I just, tears just started coming out of my eyes. I'm like, man, boy, the love of God. My goodness gracious. The love of God. And God ain't no punk now. Jesus wasn't no punk. No, yeah, Jesus wasn't no punk now. You know, when they want to throw him off the mountain, you know, he just walk on back through them. <laughs> Jesus was no punk. He, Jesus said, can't nobody touch him unless he let them. So you got to understand who, he, who you are. Who are you? you know, a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of Christians, they have no clue as to who they are. They don't understand. You can't be touched unless you allow people to touch you. Amen. Amen. Anyway. Let's look and see what this says, okay? So it says now, but solid food belongs to those who are of full age, that's mature, those who by reason of use have their senses. So now he's talking about what's on display. Senses. That's, that's what's on display, right? Who have your senses exercised to discern both good and evil. If you're not mature, you can't, de you can't discern good from evil. Babes can't discern good from evil. You know, baby, shoot, you tell them to stay away from something, you know, they just stick the hand over on it anyway. You understand what I'm saying? You know, something hot, you understand, you know it's real hot. You understand, they shouldn't be putting their hand on it. You tell them to stay away from it, they're still grabbing at it. They don't know the difference. They can discern good from evil. 
They can't discern what's hot, what's cold. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So we, we got to get to this place, man. And this is, this is just powerful stuff right here. Just powerful stuff. See, it's my, it's my coming in contact with you or someone else, not allowing your character, your disposition to affect who I am. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm going to be me no matter who you are and how you act. I'm still going to be me. I'm working. And listen, I let God work on. He's still working on me. You understand? A whole lot of things. You understand? Yeah, he still works on me because I haven't arrived. But I'm a whole lot further than I used to be. You understand what I'm saying? Because I let God develop in me his love. You understand what I'm saying, see? How did that happen? Patience with people. You see? Patience with people. And I'm getting more patient with people every day. Yeah, I am. I am. I am. I talk to myself and all that kind of stuff. You understand? You know, make confessions and all that. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, confess. Ooh, confess. Ooh, yes. Confess. Yes. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I love everybody. Yeah, I love everybody. Yeah, God loves everybody. And you see, the love of God cannot be turned off or turned on. Either you're turned on or you're not. Amen. Are you, can you understand what I'm saying? So we don't play games with this. See, you're no phony. See, by reason of use, I know phonies. Amen. See, I know people who are acting, pretending, pretending to love. You understand what I'm saying? Because it's a spiritual thing. It's not a physical thing. It's a spiritual thing. Are you, can you understand what I'm saying? Y'all yeah. remember this young lady? Uh, uh, she came up and asked a question right here, this young lady right here on the front row. I knew she was sincere in what she was asking. You see, want to, desire to. When you have a desire like that to treat people right and to do right by people, God's going to do something with you. Now, you know, a lot of us, you know, we, we exterior, hard, inside, just as soft as you can be. <laughs> and that's where God begins to deal with you on the inside so that he can bring that out under control though don't want you to be uh, a pushover and thinking that that's the love of God God Jesus was never a pushover look at the life of Jesus and you will see the love of God and you will know that the love of God is not a pushover. Are you with me? Remember him going in the temple? He wasn't a pushover. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? Under control though. Love under complete control. Love, the love of God makes you bold. I didn't say boisterous. I said bold. You understand? Put you in a position to where you're willing to tell someone the truth boldly. But the heart, you understand, is going out for that person. The compassion of God, you understand, is still in you. You're crying for that person because they are in a condition that they can't see. You understand? They are going in a direction that you're trying, you would like to save them from, but you're not their savior. You understand what I'm saying? 
And for you to speak boldly to someone who's in that condition, even if they, will, if they want to cuss you out. You see, the love of God will make you bold enough to speak truth to them. Are oh, y'all understanding what I'm saying? See, this is a whole, this is a whole different ball game. Different ball game, you see. Yeah, we're not talking about, we're not talking about being um, someone who's going to be, you know, that you're going to let people run, run over you. That's not love of God. Now, there's a whole lot of people who thought that was, but they have never gotten into the love of God. You get them in, you, you, you get them in, a, uh, in a little push, I guarantee you, the real them, they're going to come out. See, that's what I'm saying, you know. The, the people who have real blood of, love of God, they can see it's spiritual. You see? And there's a lot of people, you know, they, they phonies, you know. They go around, you know, acting like, you know, they, um, you know, they loving people and all this kind of stuff. But boy, hey, listen, you say something to them about crosswise, and they about ready to take your head off, cuss you up. You say, I thought they were a Christian. They are. They just haven't been developed. I'm trying to help you all out now with your patience. See, because if you're going to judge everybody, you better judge yourself first. So I, I thought they were a Christian. They cussed it and everything. Yeah, I understand that. They haven't had teaching. You've had some teaching, so you shouldn't be like them. And you shouldn't be judging them. You see? Yeah, just say, okay, well, I know Jesus paid the price for them to be saved. They saved, but they're a babe. I don't care how long they've been saved. If they're acting like that, they are still babes. A baby doesn't mean that you were just born again yesterday. A baby means how are you exercising? The Word of God in your life. Thank you for tuning in to today's Reigning in Life Through Faith broadcast. If you are in the D.C. metropolitan area, Dr. Mills invites you to join our encounters every Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. and every Wednesday evening for our 7.30 p.m. Bible study. If you cannot join us, we invite you to visit our website and watch us live at agapeembassy.org. Like or follow us on our social media pages for up-to-date information on what's happening in the ministry and encouraging posts that will bless your life through the week.